Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 740. I had the black pieces, my opponent went e4, and I responded with e5. And I went d4, the center game, and this can lead to all kinds of uh, interesting chess. And the main move here is uh, taking. There's no reason not to take that pawn, and you probably want to stop uh, d5 from being played. You know, knight c6 is kind of a uh, well, it's a way of playing where you're, you're encouraging white to overextend in the center, but uh, I think the pawns on e4 and d5 are, are pretty solid, so I recommend just taking it, and that's the, the main move in the book. And now there's some uh, interesting lines here. Of course, uh, simplest is just to take back with the queen or to gather it up with the knight. Those are the top two choices. And there's a couple uh, gambits that are available. c3 and bishop c4 are actually pretty interesting gambits. The... Um, uh, the Danish gambit, and um, I think it's the Gearing gambit with c3. I mean, they're both kind of interesting. Um, anyway, but my opponent played this uh, f4 move. This is known as the Halage gambit, and uh, I've never seen it before. I had no idea what to play here. But uh, it turns out the uh, the top choices here uh, involve just holding on to that pawn. Sometimes when your opponent plays a gambit, you, you uh, give the pawn back almost immediately in order to get a better a position. Uh, but in this case, um, you can get a decent position and keep the pawn. So so this is a, a really worthless gambit. <laughs> and, uh, and the moves to refute it are kind of simple. So I played knight c6, so we might as well stick with that. Uh, he went knight f3, which is actually the line in the book. And let's uh, continue for a while with the opening book line here, which goes bishop c5, just uh, overprotecting. And then a3, building up to this um, b4 idea, I guess, like uh, we saw in the game, kicking the bishop around a5 to stop that. Now bishop to, <clears throat> not that bishop, bishop to d3, keeping that pawn from coming forward, and knight to f6, and black castles, and white play, or white white castles and black plays d5. And this d5 move, I, I wanted to point out that out. Oh, and that's where this line ends, and the, the engine evaluation is, uh, you know, basically black is a pawn up, <laughs> and uh, in this situation, I guess, if the pawn comes forward, you could even consider playing knight to uh, knight to e4 there, supported by the d-pawn. Um, <clears throat> so that's probably the, the motivation for playing this way, putting the knight up first and then playing d5. I just wanted to mention that this d5 move is often a uh, antidote to a lot of these gambits. And in fact, those, uh, the Danish gambit and the Gearing gambit both have lines in which uh, d5 is a key idea for black to uh, to open up his position and avoid getting um, <clears throat> getting into uh, some awkward development issues. It just opens up lines for the pieces and, and opens up space. So um, that's that's the way to play it uh, according to the uh, opening book. Anyway, uh, so let's go. I, I played d5 immediately, and um, looking at it with the chess engine, this is also fine. Um, it keeps it keeps this advantage. Um, you know, I was a little worried about some of these exchange lines. For example, if he takes with a pawn, I guess this is okay because I just take back with a queen. And then the other idea he might have here after d5 is he might um, take with a knight. And in this case, the best answer is not to take the knight and bring his queen forward, but just to take this pawn. And if he wants to grab the knight, then you can trade queens and, and remove his uh, castling privileges and then go into an end game of pawn up. So all of that looks good. Um, so he avoided the exchanges and played e5. And all these lines are equally good for black. The engine evaluation is in the neighborhood of uh, plus one, somewhere somewhere between, you know, three quarters and a full point. So not 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 any compensation really for the pawn. E5, um, I went bishop g4, not the most accurate move. Um, let's see, just to show you best play here would be bishop c5. Kind of overprotecting that pawn, knight bd2, knight ge7, and develop the knight uh, to one of these squares. Uh, and seems like black is just fine. So bishop g4 is not the most accurate. Let's see, he played bishop d3, but still keeping an advantage. And the same with this move, bishop b4 check. Um, and he, he played the funny response, king f2, which I, uh, you know, I looked at with the chess engine, and it's not that terrible. Basically, yeah. Uh, all the moves are better for black, and uh, that, so that move is not much worse than any other. Um, but then no, there was nothing wrong with the normal looking knight b to d2 if he just wants to uh, keep material on and retain the option of castling at some point in the future. Um, you know, I'm not going to give up 
the bishop for that knight, and he's going to unpin that knight pretty quickly when he castles. So that, that's probably better than what he played. But like I said, all of these black has an advantage in all these lines. Um, let's see. When king f2, I went knight to e7 now. Knight g7. He started kicking my bishop around, and it's um, yeah, I, I kind of walked into the situation. I hadn't calculated ahead of time, so I was a little bit of a lazy play to uh, put my bishop out there and then block the retreat by playing knight to e7 without even checking if the bishop is safe. But it turns out it's okay here. It can only get chased a little bit. It can't get uh, trapped. I have time enough to move the a-pawn, but I should have really uh, uh, calculated that before playing knight to e7. Anyway, he went knight bd2 now. He's getting his pieces out. I went uh, knight f5. And um, you know, all these are, are good moves. This is a good square for the knight, and it's looking at the e3 square. So both of us played well for a few moves. Um, he went, um, oh, it's my turn. <coughs> uh, it's his turn. He went knight to b3 here. Okay. Knight to b3 here, piling up on the pawn. And, um, and then I exchanged this knight. I was thinking of getting rid of the pressure on this pawn, but it's kind of a move order inaccuracy. It's better, I mean, my next move was knight e3. It's actually better to play knight e3 immediately, gain a tempo on the queen, and then take. And you can't take back with the queen now. <laughs> I guess the queen could have gone to, let's back up. Queen could have gone to d2 perhaps, but then maybe I just want to keep the pin. And, uh, you know, it's a bit of an awkward situation for all of uh, all of white's pieces. But anyway, the chess engine line, uh, chess engine claims queen e1 is the best move. And after taking, that king takes is the best move. And then f6 to open open up the center. I wanted to get in that f6 move, but I was always a little bit worried that he might just uh, push that pawn forward. And that would be an annoyance. So I was kind of waiting to play f6 at a time. I was sure that uh, his uh, e6 reply was not uh, available. But anyway, we didn't get to that position. I, I took the knight immediately. So he was able to take back to the queen. He gets a more active position here. Black is still better, but uh, you know I'm, I'm giving I'm giving White more chances than he deserves. Um, okay, Bishop e2 still piling up on this pawn. So I went knight to c4, hitting the bishop. Bishop went back to c1. He didn't want to trade and bring these two pawns forward. That would be uh, pretty dangerous looking. Those two pawns in his camp crashing through. Um, so I just castled. He played rook to e1. Yes, logical getting behind the e-pawn. And now I played queen e7. So queen e7 is just a mistake, giving up that pawn. And after that, uh, it, it turns into much more of an even game. There's a really nice move the chess engine found here, which is this queen h4 check. Um, what's cool is it's kind of a double attack. Um, the rook is undefended here, and it, the pawn is undefended. So the king uh, really has no good moves. Any any king move results in um, in losing, you know, either the rook or the pawn, and uh, and that's an important pawn here defending the king side. So uh, so that's uh, <clears throat> no good, um, not good for uh, white to give it up. Uh, and then if he blocks, if he blocks with the um, the uh, g pawn here, I take the h pawn. And finally, the best reply is just to block with the queen. And then I can trade queens and, and go into a, a pawn up endgame where I'm just better. So that would be good. That queen h4 check was a nice idea there. I didn't spot. I think the key idea I missed was that uh, that the rook was undefended. So uh, so he couldn't just move his king back. I thought he would just move his king back to, to g1 and, and just protect everything. But the, but the rook is hanging there. Um, anyway, the other another idea here is to play a5. So... You know, I had, had a couple of good continuations at this point, but um, I played the move queen e7. I guess I was still thinking about how can I uh, how can I block that pawn and get an f6 to try and open things up here, although it's less attractive with the rook there. Um, <clears throat> anyway, he takes the pawn since I didn't bother to defend it, and now the, range, the game is in the range of about even. Uh, my knight is hanging. I have to hop back into e3, which is okay. I mean, that's... Um, the only square for it. And of course, the knight on e3 hits the queen. Um, so he needs to, well, best. Best is to just take that knight. And uh, bishop takes, pawn takes, king gets to g1. And um, and this is okay. This is about even. 
Uh, you know, I can push the pawn forward with a check, but the king can always hide in the corner. So that check at the moment doesn't gain anything. So we've reached a situation here where uh, the material is even and um, it is opposite colored bishops. So uh, maybe in some lines it, it turns kind of drawish, but I would say it's still you know, even in the sense of being uh, dynamically equal, you know, chances for both sides. So it'd still be an interesting game from this point after knight e3 if he had just uh, traded off that knight. But instead he chose this moment to uh, move his king to safety and uh, neglected the safety of his queen. So uh, he resigned after that. So it was a short game, but uh, well, I wanted to show it especially because it was a new gambit that uh, I hadn't seen before. So it seems like just to recap how you play against that gambit, just, just play with natural developing moves. Bring your knight out and your bishop out to defend that pawn. Um, protect protect the uh, b4 square so you don't get chased away and then bring the knight out the other knight out and castle and you should have a good game and uh, don't forget about this d5 move to help bust up the center and that should uh, that should do you well for dealing with the notorious halash gambit okay see you guys like later bye